Hello and welcome to Tinkertube's lab. Today we are going to build another little do-it-yourself kit. This time it is the AVR Net.io kit from a well-known German distributor. The AVR Net.io is just a little AVR microcontroller combined with a networking chip. Um, you can control it over Ethernet by using very basic, um, very basic commands for example using LabVIEW, which is what I'm going to do because I'm using this as part of my study project. So I thought it would be quite interesting to see how this is going to be built. And yeah, so I just started the camera and we are going to see how this is going to look. So let's get started. Take the little bag of nice things. Put this away, put all this big stuff away, and those are chokes, resistors, away with this, away with it, big stuff, big stuff, big stuff, big stuff, caps, diodes, more caps, 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 stupid thing. Uh, resistor, 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 stuff, resistor. Dip, 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 dip. Mechanical stuff, jumpers, crystals, an LED, and some more caps. So Let's get started by populating the resistors. Um, let's start by, well, what is, what is this one? It is red, red, red. Uh, red, 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 It is R4. Ah, again, I'm using my little Biegebänkchen. I'm just using the German word because I have no idea what it is called in English. They are using a smaller pin pitch than the Chinese people. So, R4. And again, I'm trying to get the tolerance rings all in one direction so it's just for a nicer look. The next one is a orange orange violet. So okay it should be orange orange red which will be 3.3 kilo, kilo ohms but <laughs> please tell me this is not red. This is definitely not red. So I guess I will check it. Oh, sorry. Just hit the camera with the door. Three point three kilo ohms. So this is uh, you can't really read. You can't really read it. I'm sorry. So actually, this seems to be a red ring. Oh, but this is definitely violet. I'm sure. And this is not because I'm colorblind, which I really am. But well. I guess I should be able to differentiate red from violet. This should be R5. Next one. 
This is red, violet, and brown. Mm, yes, this could be possible. This should be R1. By the way, it is so hot in here, it is really annoying. We have around, well, I don't have a thermometer right now, but I would assume we are having around 30 or 35 degrees in here. Blue, violet, uh, yellow, violet, brown. Okay, we don't have anything with yellow, so this, oh no, we have, we have yellow, violet, brown. This is R2. Now we have all the resistors that are in pairs, which will make the whole thing a lot easier to identify. So those will be 10k, brown, black, orange, and yes they are. They are R12 and R13. Now we have the two chokes, which are L1 and L2, sitting right here. And we have the diodes. It's just one kind of diode, so I guess I can populate all of them right now. If they let go from this paper strip. So those were the diodes. Now let's go for the crystals. Um, it is quite nice that this is a double-sided board so I can solder those components from the top side keeping it and keeping them straight on the bottom of the uh, of the board so that there are no gaps between the component and the board and then I can flip it over, cut the leads to a very short length and solder them all together um, which will give us really smooth solder joints. So for the soldering action I'm going to increase the airflow. By the way, it is not really necessary to solder the back side of the PCB, but um, I personally like the look and feel of the double-sided soldered pads, so I'm going through the effort of soldering those also. So after those components are soldered, I am going over to the crystals. As I said, Q1 is the 25 megahertz, which will be this one. And Q2 is the 60 megahertz. So after that I am going to populate these th ceramic caps, which will most likely be the caps for the crystals. So I'm not bothering to take a look at the datasheet because it is quite ob obvious. Mm. 
and I'm also going to populate the IC sockets. Where's my straightener? There it is. This is a really useful device. You can straighten the pins off an IC or an IC socket by just placing the part over this little block or bridge or whatever you want to call it which is it hard to do when all pins are going in all directions so I place it over there and just press it press it quite firmly and now we have perfectly straight pins and the part should fit where it belongs to without any problem at all. And there is uh, there's a groove. This one. this one and also for the bigger one there's a at the back side there's a bigger slot so even those can be straightened with this little tool I must admit that I have no idea where I got this But I hope I never lose it because it is so useful. Think of straightening all pins by your hand. <laughs> that would be a nice little Peter. It's interesting, one of the pins jumped out of the, the socket. I have to push it back in. Damn. I punctured my skin. back in.
Oh. Next we are going to place these larger caps. I'm zooming out again. We have 10 nanofarad. Yes, those are 10 nanofarad. There's C6 and C10. This is C10. And C6 is above here. And the other one are 0.1, so 100 nanofarad. Which should be C1, 2, 4, and 11. C2. C1. C4 and C11 is beneath here. C11. I actually hate those caps with those pre folded legs. Like this one, you see. Focus. No focus. Yes, those. I, I hate those. Why can't I decide for myself how deep I want them to sit on my board? Why? They're just wiggling around. I hate that. You know what? Let's I'm just straightening them now. And now we can solder the other sides. So, next we are going to get our alcohol caps, electrolyte caps, populated, which will be C7, 14, 15, 16, and 17. C7. C7 is here. Why did why did they choose the right pin pitch at this one but not at this one? Why? Who would do such a thing? This is annoying. Look at this, now they are like flapping in the breeze. So next we have those two caps 
one is a 100 microfarad, the other one is 460 and I guess it's quite obvious where every one belongs. And again, they chose the wrong pin pitch. What have we left? We have the LED, wherever this one is going. There. The internal headers, like ISP and XTERM, whatever. And the jumpers. So the last things I have to solder are the voltage regulators, we have an LM317 and a 7805. The 7805 is IC1, so the other one will be the LM317. Soldering the middle pin. Mm, yep, they are quite straight.
So. That was it. The last thing we have to do is to plug in the ICs and get the jumpers at the right position. Uh, analog reference will be internal and what the heck is written there? Proc or norms, whatever. Let's say it is not in programming mode. Um, the ICs come in a separate box, which is quite nice. Sure, I, I, I am wearing my uh, anti-static wrist strap before touching them. Definitely, I am using this uncomfortable thing. So let's populate those. We have the MAX232. Where is my straightener device? MAX232. We'll go here. The ENC28J60 is the networking chip. That will go here. And the big one is um, 80 mega 32. And we have our AVR net IO with our unique MAC address, which is quite nice that it comes with this uh, sticker. So we can place the sticker somewhere Maybe I shall. Yeah, I guess I should put it on the top side. So, that was it. We are basically done. In an upcoming episode, I am going to take a deeper look inside this device. As I said, I am going to use this for a study project and um, since I have to work on this quite some time, I, I will have one or the other situation where I can show you some things which you can do with it. So until then, goodbye.